Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited. Drone light show to eliminate night sky at AirVenture. PAL-V production model makes debut at Farnborough. And FAA grants launch license to Virgin Orbit for Launcher 1. Hello, I'm Laura Hudson. It's July 9th and this is Airborne Unlimited. For the first time in North America, a drone light show will be a part of an air show when EAA AirVenture Oshkosh 2018 presents up to 100 lighted drones in flight during air shows on July 25th and 28th. Great Lakes Drone Company based in Waterloo, Michigan will be flying their drones and is one of just two U.S. companies authorized by the FAA for such displays. EAA Dave Champson notes that what makes this event especially memorable are the intricate maneuvers that are capable by up to 100 synchronized drones, highlighting the possibilities of safe and responsible drone flying. People come to AirVenture to see aerial excitement not seen anywhere else, and these performances certainly continue that tradition. During AirVenture, the LED-equipped drones will perform a 10-minute The History of Flight show, complete with musical accompaniment. When one thinks of the place where flying innovations and excitements occur, Oshkosh instantly comes to mind, said Matt Quinn, president of Great Lakes Drone Company. The EAA AirVenture Oshkosh night air shows begin at 8 p.m. on July 25th and July 28th. Announced schedules are subject to change based on weather or operational conditions. After the break, FAA will not regulate legroom on airliners. Concorde's recombinant gas RG series sealed battery technology produces a high performance battery with the advantages of being pre-tested and fully charged at the factory. Find out more about Concorde's entire line of batteries at www.concordbattery.com. Concorde, the heart of your aircraft. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude and slip. With integral backup battery, Safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. Welcome back. If you have a story suggestion for Airborne Unlimited, Aero TV, Airborne Unmanned, the AMA Drone Report, our website or podcast, just email to news by at aero news.net. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. The FAA has sent a letter to the airline passengers' right organization, Flyers' Right, saying it is not responsible for the amount of legroom available on airliners. Flyers' Right sued the FAA, demanding that it set standards for legroom, saying that it was a safety issue. The organization said that shrinking legroom on airliners and the increasing size of the average American make it more difficult to evacuate an airliner in an emergency situation. The FAA has issued an SAIB following an incident in which a cup holder at the first observer seat on a Boeing 737 aircraft stuck to a cup and was inadvertently discarded with the cup. This created an open hole, exposing a circuit breaker panel just below. The P-611 circuit breaker panel contains some of the airplane's primary electrical power circuit breakers. Spilling liquid or dropping something metal into the open hole could result in a short circuit. August 19th has been set as the fourth annual World Helicopter Day, which aims to raise awareness of the contributions that helicopters make to our society and celebrate the diverse range of people that design, fly, and support them. The day is held on the third Sunday of August each year. There are an estimated 56,200 helicopters worldwide, and the industry employs more than 500,000 people. Shell Aviation has announced the introduction of a first-of-its-kind electric pump jet refueling vehicle in its operations at Stuttgart Airport, Germany. 
The vehicle significantly reduces diesel consumption during aircraft refueling, supporting airports in their efforts to reduce emissions across their operations. Well, that's it for today's Sherpa on the Patch. Now let's move on to the rest of the news. From July 16th through the 22nd, the Pal V Liberty will have its debut at the Farnborough International Air Show. The production model is the moment of truth, the moment where the wall between fiction and facts is torn down. A production model is the last stage in the R&D process before starting full production and delivery, said Robert Digimon, CEO of Pal V. All certifications required for commercialization will be granted on the basis of this production model. It's the pivotal point that separates pioneers from dreamers. Once full certification is granted in 2020, we will hand over the keys of the Pal V Liberty to our first customers. The Pal V Liberty is currently going through the last step of the certification process, compliance demonstration. It takes a lot of testing to prove that the Pal V Liberty complies with the regulations, said Mike Stekellenberg, Pal V's chief engineer. He continued, our design philosophy of complying with existing road and air regulations saved us many years in time to market. Instead of opting for a flying car concept on the basis of not yet existing or immature technologies, requiring new regulations, we deliberately chose to design, engineer, and manufacture a flying car with proven technologies. This approach enables a realistic and imminent first product delivery date. After these messages, FAA grants launch license to Virgin Orbit for Launcher 1. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Based on the popular Sling 2 LSA, the Sling 4 was designed to be the most practical and desirable lightweight four-place experimental aircraft on the market. Find out more about this 115 horsepower turbocharged airplane at AirplaneFactory.com. Hello fellow pilots, I'm John King. And I'm Martha King. Well, we're headed off to Oshkosh for Air Venture and we're really looking forward to it. Martha and I are going to be making a bunch of talks there. And we hope you'll come by and say hi to us. We'd love to meet you. And by the way, stay tuned right here to Prop Wash. We're going to be making some exciting announcements direct from AirVenture. Welcome back. The FAA has granted a launch license to Virgin Orbit for the first launch of its Launcher One reusable launch vehicle. Virgin Orbit is authorized to conduct a reusable launch vehicle mission, the FAA license states. Virgin Orbit is authorized to launch Launcher 1 utilizing a Boeing 747-400 carrier aircraft. The RLV mission authorized by this license commences and concludes at Mojave Air and Spaceport. You can't launch without a license, so this is a big step forward for us, the Virgin Orbit team posted on Facebook. This week, Virgin Orbit also received DOT approval to ship Launcher 1 to meet the carrier aircraft once they are ready to launch. Next up, we'll be mating our pylon to our 747. That's the mechanism that holds Launcher 1 safely and securely under Cosmic Girl's wing. Then we'll move into our captive carry test campaign, starting with flying with just the aircraft and the pylon. After that, we'll practice flying with a fully integrated Launcher 1. On that rocket's final flight, we'll run one more key test, dropping the rocket from Cosmic Girl. It'll free fall all the way back to Earth, collecting data all the way. That'll set us up nicely for our first orbital flight. Well, that's our program for today. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is streamed on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, alternating with Airborne Unmanned on Tuesday and the AMA Drone Report each Thursday. Additional breaking news bulletins may be posted for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. If you're watching us on YouTube, please subscribe and do check us out on Facebook and Twitter. Get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. We'll see you tomorrow.